In Eastern Europe, they've been making sliver bits for a long, long time. Jetco, tell us about it. Slivovitz is a plum brandy. This is basically the moonshine of Eastern Europe. Plums were first distilled into alcohol around the 15th century. Slivovitz was made in small batches with plums from family orchards. It can be clear, it can be aged, and some people even infuse it with honey. In the late 1800s, commercial Slivovitz distilleries opened up, but many of the Slivovitz distilleries were taken over by the Nazis during World War II and the communists after that. Thankfully, the backwoods tradition of making Slivovitz never stopped. Those are the moonshiners that kept the backwoods recipes alive. Slivovitz is really having a big comeback now. And now people all over the world are getting to know what Eastern Europeans have known for a long time. But this right here, that's some damn good liquor. All right, guys, you've heard everything we've got to say. You got one hour to build this mash. You'll have five days for it to work. We want the best possible sliver of it we can get on our table. Guys, you burned a full hour. Got three left. You blew over? Oh, no, I just ruined everything. I got too much in my pot. Got oh, a... you puke. Yeah, it's a little, uh... A little too hot. That is not what you want to see coming out your worm spout. No, no. I was waiting so long for it to heat up, and I was getting impatient. So I turned up the heat a little more, and when it started boiling, it just started boiling too vigorously. Now we're back. Still a little colorful, but it's heads anyways. Guys, two hours left. Yeah, trying to get some liquor. Nice. Keith, you blending us that perfect jar we're looking for? The taste is good, but a little lower proof than I had wanted. I was aiming for about 110 proof, and uh, I didn't. it didn't taste like it. It tasted low. I think I'm about ready to cut this off. 30 minutes, y'all. Are you happy with your product so far? Uh, yeah, my heart's came out great. I think it's going to turn out really well. You in tails, or? Yeah, I'm in tails. So I probably am nearly water at this point, but it still tastes really good, like plum that. water almost. I think I'm done. All right, guys. That's your final decision? Up? Yep, that's it. That's the one? That's the winner. All right, guys, 10 minutes left in your time. Better be getting this jar picked out. Good luck, guys. On the first run, it's it's tough to keep the proof up and the flavor. That's your final decision? About what I can do, so. You got two minutes, Daniel. He likes to live dangerous, don't he? I felt like my hearts were at, you know, probably 110, maybe, maybe 100. You guys enjoy it. That's your final decision? That's it. Gather up that little bar and get Take you a break. break on us. Good luck, Daniel. All right, guys. This actually is a bottle of Slivovitz that I picked up in Poland about 15 years ago. They make it and sell it there at 140. If we start here, at least you'll get an idea of what we're looking for. First, pay attention to the nose. You're going to get that plum. High proof, but it's not horrible. <laughs> but you can see how it goes away. <laughs> Somebody yeah, I know it me. takes your breath for a second, <laughs> but you'll be OK. This is a good drink after you've been drinking. It's just like breathing wasabi back yeah. here in the back, but it goes away. It don't it don't linger there long. I mean, Exhale right after you take a drink. Don't inhale. Well, it's, it's closer to the grappa if you ever had any grappa, but the grappa kind of takes the oxygen out of your body. But this is just a little bit better with, it, with the pure plum flavor instead of the grapes. Now, is this the way they drink it? I mean, just, they just chill. Man's gonna drink a lot of that. Now, he better be tough. You better be close yeah. to a pillar. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy drink. Well, that's what we're looking for. Whew. Dad, damn. Yeah, to warm your tongue up. It warmed it up like turning the thermostat up. Set that over there before the bottom falls out of that jar. <laughs> Let's get busy tasting this other stuff. Well, the first one here is Daniel. That might be that 160 prison. It may be. There's no B there, so. It's water or alcohol, one of the two, right? Yeah, probably for our sake, we'd be better off with water. 
We'll yeah. say a little prayer before we start drinking. Like least. they always say, you know, you, you can't drink all day unless you get started. Can't drink all day drinking them jet fuel either. Let's look for the nose first. Does it yeah. have plum coming in? Yeah. I wish I had like maybe two more minutes just to kind of dial it in. So we'll see what we get. <laughs> that's a pretty good drink. I'm thinking that's really a low proof. It is, or it'd be a whole lot harder yeah, on your nose. All right, let's get Keith. Now, Keith made mention his proof was a little low. I tried to make it a little bit hotter. I used one of the higher hearts. I'm not at 140, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I would say we got a little water with some flavoring in it. Low proof liquor. Oh, I got good nose. It tastes good if that's mouth you in it. <laughs> I don't taste any plum. I think we got two jaws that have been blended. Yeah, way into the I tail. think they blended tails with, with more water. tails. I think we move on to Nicole. Uh, it looks like same jaw. Same problem. No alcohol in it. I noticed yours was a little cloudy. Mine was really cloudy, yeah. and I'm used to that in practice, but your guys's were really clear, and that made me really nervous. It smells OK. I believe she's high proof. She's got some alcohol in it, but it's not no, high proof. No, it's not high proof. No, maybe it, maybe 6 to 70. We got a little something to judge on now, though. I think we need a true reading with our hydrometer. I think all of them are very low proof. Oh, really. I agree. I mean, Nicole's probably the highest. I agree. That is Daniel. And we're at 67. We're going to Keith. 35 proof. And Nicole. Nicole is 71 proof. Hopefully, they're going to bring a little more alcohol to the party where we got a little something. Bring taste. the alcohol, keep the keep flavor. Keep that flavor. They've all got yeah. flavor there. They just got to get some alcohol in. While you had a little break, Mark and Dick and I went over the three jaws. We just went by the taste profile. What this gives us is the pecking order that you all go to the still house and pick your parts. Daniel and Keith both have similar taste profiles. Keith, your nose is pretty strong, more than your proof. Your proof is actually lower than what you think it is. 35. And Daniel, yours is good, too, with the nose. And it tastes as good. Uh, your proof is low, too, 67. And we kind of look at it, Nicole is more of a higher proof, 71. I don't know how she did it with so many jaws, but I think she must have picked out one of the first jaws that come out where maybe Keith and Danny, y'all did some blending. And that may have took down the proof a little bit. So you will have a, a long ways to go to catch up. But what you have to keep in mind here is what kind of steel parts do you need to assemble to get your proof where it needs to be? Keith, you're number three in the line. Daniel, you're number two. Nicole, you're number one. 